So I am very honored to be here today um, with all of you people. And really what I hope that you will take from my brief time with you is just one or two ideas that you can take and use right away because stress for all of us is aggravating whatever we have. I'm not saying that stress causes cancer, stress does this, but it makes a difference in how we respond to things, and it also makes a difference in how we are with other people. So that I'm hoping you'll just pick up a couple of things with me. And if you flip the PowerPoint on, Eric, now I'll tell you what my goals are for this time. You with me? There we go. And I call them sanity strategies because it's just, a lot of it's just common sense and maybe nothing new you'll be getting but just to do them. So keep going. And going. These are my goals. You enjoy yourself, you learn at least one of these strategies and you use it beginning today. And I always feel better if I have a chance to sing a little bit just to make me feel at home. Uh, the song that I'm going to sing is a Sephardic song called The Rose, which is probably five centuries old. If you know Spanish, you'll understand. I'll give you a little translation. It says, the rose blooms in the month of May and no one, not even the soul of the rose itself, understands what it goes through to bloom, suffering as it does through love to bloom. So here's the song. And you could put the rose up, Eric. La rosa en flores in the month of May, neither the soul is suffering from love, neither the Thank you. Oh, gracias. Next PowerPoint, please. That's the rose, and go on. That's actually from my front garden, photographed by my brother. So research shows that we usually remember only 10% of what we read, 26 what we hear, 30 what we see, 50 of what we see and hear, and on the other hand, we remember 90% of what we say while doing a related activity. So that's my warning for you that you are not going to be sitting here listening to me for the next bunch of minutes. That's why you'll be participating. Are you ready to roll? If you would right now reach, reach your hands up and say with me so that they'll hear us in Grand Central. North! North. Yay! South! South! East! East! Wherever it is. West! West! Cantaloupe! Cantaloupe. Watermelon! Brunswager, Brunswager, Baloney, whatever. It doesn't make any difference. What the heck? Stretch your arms. Go. So this is one of the simple strategies which I'll tell you about more later, which I call simply the 4D, which is the four directions. And if you're at a meeting and you can't actually stand up and do that, you can do a foot 4D underneath the table and just move something so it changes your mind and where you are. Ready for the next thing? Your sounds were great. Me, 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 me. You, 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 you. We, 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 we. 
us, 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 us. Now turn around. Now, you, what are the words? Me, you, we, us. Why me first? How many of you are caretakers in this room? How many are caretakers of yourself? If you don't take care of yourself, you're no good for anybody else. I say you're the CEO of your emotions. So it's me, you, we, us. Now look at the people at your table and sing it to each other. Are you ready? Me, 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 me. You, 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 you. We, 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 we. Us, us, us. Thank you. That was good. So I wanted to check out First of all, to make sure I'm in the right place, is there anybody in the room who has zero stress? I asked that once at a very large group in Madison, Connecticut, and the woman way in the back said, I don't, I don't. The woman next to her said, she lies. <laughs> so if you go to the next PowerPoint, since 9-11, medical experts say that we live now in a chronic heightened state of alertness accompanied by an increased sense of helplessness. And that's true. Like when I think about my dad, he rarely went on the plane to go on the trips. He'd drive. But I see like 95-year-old women now at the airport having to take belts off, shoes off, all of this. This constant level, if you see something, say something, the stress that's in our background, and if you have any kind of chronic pain or illness, the stress level is intensified. So my main goal here is to let us know we do have stress, but there are things we can do to manage, monitor. Go to the next one, Eric, please. Just want to check, did that ever happen to you? Try to take just one day, but lately several have attacked me at once. And the next one. This is a course 101 in stress. See if you can fill in the blanks. The only time that humans are without stress is when they are dead. Right. Right. Sometimes people think it's when I'm on vacation, when the bills are paid, or when the kids are gone. But Hans Selye, after years of work, he was saying it's normal and natural to have stress. This arm would not bend unless I put pressure on it. My heart wouldn't beat unless I put pressure. My husband, who's a furniture designer, was talking about stress, and he said, yeah, everything needs stress, but you would not put an eye beam on an egg, right? So if we're very fragile, stress is really a problem. Most powerful and most controllable stress in the world is? Fill in the blanks. The human mind. The human mind. And stress is, this is Hans Selye again. How many of you cook? See if you can fill in the blanks. Stress is the spice of life. If you have too much stress, it ruins it. If you don't have enough, it's blah, bland. So we'll be talking about things you can do. The next slide, please, Eric. Robert Sapolsky, Dr. Robert Sapolsky, has written a wonderful book called Why Zebras Don't Get Ulcers. Why do you think they don't? They don't care. They don't care. <laughs> yeah. They're not hanging around saying, will I have enough money to send my kids to college? Did you see how that lady zebra looked at me last night? No. They are in the now. They are in the now. They're not in the past and future. And Sapolsky explains. He says, animals make much better use of their stress responses than most of us humans do. He said, if we repeatedly turn on the stress response or we cannot turn it off at the end of a stressful event, the stress response is as damaging as the stressor itself. 
So the idea on these is to find out that you can do something to monitor it. And the next, please. When I was in college in Kentucky, I can remember my prof saying, Lily, better learn everything you can now, because you're at the prime. When you're 25, you'll start losing your neurons, and you'll never get them back. Do you remember hearing any of that when you were in school? It's not true. They are going, and next slide for you. Recent neurological research demonstrates that our brains and our neural pathways are not fixed, they are plastic. We have the power to change our brains by how we act and even by how we think. New neurons grow throughout our lifetime. The next one, please. You can rewire a brain. Brain scans indicate our brains produce new neurons. They emerge when new learning occurs. The parts of the brain that get the most exercise are most likely to grow. If you could switch back to me again. I was just going to tell there is a lot of research about that. One of the ones that I love, there was a study of hack drivers in London. Do you know in London you cannot get a license to drive until you've memorized all the streets of London? Don't you wish that were true in Manhattan? <laughs> when they examined the hippocampal area, which is sometimes called the mapping area, in the cab drivers had more activity and was actually larger than in the counterparts, same age, same economic status, because they had not exercised those parts of the brain. It's very useful to know that also that applies to people over 40 who are, for instance, if you are learning a violin for the first time, it's not too late. You don't have the agility that you had when you were 12. But even after that, the cortex continues to grow. The more activity that it has, the more it grows. And I want to say about that, especially for dealing with emotions. You could go to the next one, please. You can't. John Kabat-Zinn, who's done a lot with stress management, says, you can't ride the waves, but you can learn to surf. So we're going to ride the waves with these OASIS, second, 60-second strategies, as simple as four, three, two, one. Can you hear me now? Good. I'll stay here and not move so much. Go to the next one, please. The 4D, which you did at the beginning, the north-south, do that with me right now again. North, south, east, west. And sometimes I do, instead of just the four directions, I do a 4D dump, which means get rid of things that are bogging me down. Outside of my office, there's a huge dumpster. So I might say on a particular day, I want to dump unanswered emails, unpaid bills, dirty dishes, whatever. So if you did a 4D dump right now, what is one thing that you would like to dump? Just say it out loud and dump it. And once you... Once you dump it, you can then have room to invite something else in. Go to the next one, please. The 3BC is actually to calm your mind. I'll tell you how this one began. A friend of mine was a social worker with middle school kids, and she said, Millie, can you come and teach anything so that kids can learn about impulse control and bullying? So I said, yeah, we could do something. So I went to the kids and said, what are the things that get you aggravated, upset, mad? And they listed a lot of things like when my big brother picks on me, when my parents don't understand me. And I said, well, we adults have a lot of things that get us upset too. So one of the things that I do when I'm stressed is to simply put my hands on my belly. Would you put your hands on your belly now? And the kids laughed at belly. And just blow it out, just go, and you know that nature abhors a vacuum, so let the fresh come in. And blow it out again. 
and inhale, and blow it out again, and inhale. Breath is so essential. I asked the kids, did you notice any difference? They didn't say anything. But when I came back the following week, I said, did anybody try any of those things? And this kid in the back just said, Miss Grinnell, Miss Grinnell, I did, I did the three BC, I did. And I said, Gary, what's the three BC? Because I hadn't said that at all. And he said, you know, the three breath countdown. So I said, when did you use it? He said, I was in gym class and nobody chooses me, and I hate it because nobody ever chooses me. So I remember, and I was afraid I was going to cry, so I went <sighs> and You know what? I didn't cry, and somebody chose me. So I went home, and I thought, I better teach this to my mom, because she gets mad a lot. So he made this whole deal, got her when she got home from school, from work, and she said, Gary, I don't have time to do this. Mom, it only takes a minute. No, I don't have time. I'm fixing your supper. Can't you tell? So he worked at a deal that he would do the dishes if she would sit down with him for a minute. So he taught her. But he said, do you know what she told me after that? She said, Gary, I do not have time to do a 3BC. Gary said, I told her, Mom, will you at least do a 1BC? <laughs> so if you remember when you're tense, worried about now, the past, the future, just put your hands on the belly and breathe out. Just exhale as much as possible. Let the stress go and then take in fresh. We can go to the next slide, which I call the cue to do. Now, I don't know about you, but I have begun to notice bodily symptoms when I'm stressed and they often give me an indication of what's going on. I will often feel that I'm getting a headache or my stomach gets all upset. So that's my cue that something is aggravating me. And I ask, okay, what's the situation? Is there anything I can do about it right now? If so, do it. And then I ask, what channel am I on? What emotional channel? And a lot of times for me, it's the worry channel. My mother was the queen of worry. Her mother was the queen of worry. I thought it was genetic until a friend of mine said, Nellie, that's not genetic. It's just a habit. So if I'm on the worry channel, I can switch to another channel. Anything that's OK right now. Not Pollyanna doesn't mean it's perfect, but like right now, I can say, wow. That's pretty interesting. I just pick something. Right now, look at something that looks OK to you. And on purpose, go from a worry channel to a one thing that's OK channel. Let me see your channel changers. I don't see them. Would you get your thumbs out? What's, I say that worry is my default channel. That's the one I slip into quite often. Notice what's your default channel. For some people, it's anger, frustration. And choose another channel right now and go there. And if you hang out in the better channel, you'll notice there is a difference in your mind and in your body. And the more you exercise that, it's like if I go to the gym and lift only my right arm, that muscle will grow. So if I stay on that OK channel for a while, that wiring will get stronger in my brain. And the last one, new one, on your table, if you haven't yet chosen a stone, please take one now. And I forgot to get a stone. Do you mind? Thank you. So I learned this the summer after my bicycle accident when I was recuperating. I went to a retreat with a, a monk named Thich Nhat Hanh. Some of you may know his name. But he teaches the kids how to do this, knowing that if the kids get it, we adults might get it. So he said, here's the idea. Look at this stone. Notice its colors. Is it the same on both sides? 
How much does it weigh? Is it warm or is it cool? So all we're going to do now is to take 10 easy breaths in and out with your eyes open, because this is not about going someplace else. It's about developing the emotional muscles to be right here, right now, with whatever's going on. And this is a tough Olympic sport. It's not a piece of cake. So right now, I'll do it with you. Looking at your stone, eyes open, in and out, 10 times. And if your mind goes somewhere else, don't fuss at it, because that's what our minds do. Just bring it back. And know that you can put this in your pocket and do it any time you want to. One of the favorite people that I taught it to, who's a big CEO in New Haven, he had had two heart attacks in his 40s, and he said, I don't have time for stress management. I'm a type AA personality. He came for one session, and his wife said, you need this, Tony. I taught him this, didn't know if he got it, but I ran into him downtown New Haven a couple months later, and he came up to me, Aaron, do you mind giving me your hand? He came up and he said, Millie, great to see you. He had a stone in his hand. <laughs> and he said, yeah, it reminds me to chill with Mill, you know? <laughs> that was 10 years ago. I saw him last month, he still has his stone. So those are the four simple strategies. If you would take next slide and for the very last thing, take a minute right now. What's the most important thing that you got right now from this short amount of time after lunch? And what's one specific way that you will do it beginning now? And I think I'll sing very quickly that last line of the song to end things for you. Miel amo se escurete sufriendo de amor. Thank you all.